Hello everyone and welcome back into my professional channel. My name is Simone Berliat. I am a professional in hospitality with over 24 years experience. Today I would like to speak with you about the hospitality in South Australia. What are the problems and what could be the possible solution in my opinion. This is the second video. If you're interested to see the first part of the video, please browse on my website or on the YouTube channel page. You will find it pretty soon. There are no many videos at the moment. So, um, the first time, the first video, I've been speaking about what are the problems, in my opinion, about South Australia hospitality industry. So, uh, I've been splitting the uh, the world market in three different categories which are the workers or labor force, the market that is made from businesses and suppliers and uh, the uh, final customer which actually is the demand. Under these three different categories I found what are the possible problems in my opinion doing a comparison between the five different countries in which I've been working in in the last 10 years. I've been visiting and working in five countries, as I just said. I've been working in Australia, I've been working in New Zealand, I've been working in Bulgaria, I've been working in the UK and I've been working in Italy. Obviously the majority of the time of my work profession was in Italy. So I've been working over there for 15 years and then in the other countries at least for one year. The only country where I had much more experience than the others apart than Italy is Australia. South Australia where I am now. Here in South Australia I had the opportunity to work and manage a Celador cafe in McLaren Vale and I had the chance to work in many different small venues located in the city yeah, majority in the city, I can say. So, uh, under the category of uh, workers, what were the problems that I found? The first one is that uh, generally the workers over here, they have a higher level of work instability. Uh, the high percentage, I can't give a percentage number because I do not have this data at the moment, uh, the, a high percentage of workers, they work as casual. Working as casual in hospitality uh, provides you a slightly higher income, but also uh, provides you with a lot of instability in your work and because of that in your life. Why people are choosing to work in a casual position? Mainly because working as a casual allows them to pursue another job or another profession. So if I work as profession as casual in hospitality here in Australia is because probably I'm studying at school and I'm looking to do another job. And uh, so it's a passing by profession. The second problem I figured out I found over here it's that the profession in hospitality is not considered a whole full profession but is more a, um, again just as I said a um, temporary position so it, it, your professionality is not recognized especially if you are specialized and you uh, pass you go above the average level of uh, um, professional or professionality at that point you have no more value than uh, other workers not because you won't have a more value but simply because you've been spending more time on studying about the a specific um, industry or a specific topic in the industry but that is not recognized at you so uh, you are not receiving the professional and uh, the social recognition that you will deserve. The third problem and uh, for someone is probably the most important but for me it's the second one which is the uh, professional recognition in the industry. It's a lower wage. I mean to specify it's not that you gain less money than other countries or other states in Australia. Probably you gain more money per hour here in Australia than not working in Italy. 
However, here in Australia, the average wage is quite higher in, compar in comparison to the wage that you can gain as professional in hospitality. Therefore, you working here in Australia as professional, you have less chance or have to have a good lifestyle or at least to have a lifestyle compared to your peers. So people that have been studying like you at school, but maybe they decide to work in another industry. Then moving into the market, the market in South Australia is a small market. We speak about 1 million 200,000 uh, people living in the city in the Greater Adelaide and 500,000 living in the countryside. While if you do a comparison, you speak about um, Melbourne or you speak about Sydney, you're already having a 4 million people cities which means that the market is, is quite small there is much more competition and also it's a more a family market so the, the business is oriented the average market is oriented on families which generally they do not have the money or they do not have the time to enjoy high standards in hospitality especially speaking about restaurants then lack of professional workers in the industry that is still again still speaking under the market of uh, under the category of market that's obviously because if you if, if people is not motivated to work in the industry it's not also uh, available to work in the industry and that is not much that I have to say more. Then uh, there is another problem, in my opinion, which is the yes marketing strategy, which is correlated to the size of the market and the family market. What it means that many businesses, instead of risking to provide a high-end service, they prefer satisfy the simple, um, um, what can I say, the simple needs to the customers, without saying no saying no in South Australia it's quite risky it's higher risky it's, it's probably more risky than doing that in Sydney or Melbourne because over there you still have a chance to choose your own market while over here if you choose your marketing too much you risk to stay without customers then the finishing is obviously the distribution which is a problem when you have a such small market not many businesses they are interested to come over and bring their own products over your place and uh, when you have a limited uh, distribution it's difficult it's more difficult for you to provide the product that is going to make the difference to, for your customer to complete the square or to complete the, the, the pint in the market Obviously, South Australia, like Australia, it's a kind of blended, multicultural market. And in some cases, it's a problem, because when you have different cultures, different cultures, they approach the hospitality in different ways. And that is going to obviously make it more complicated, the job of the high-end restaurants. Then let's move on the problems correlate with the final customer. So what I see the problem over here for the final customer is the habits. Customers over here in comparison to Italy, they have a higher level of customization. They have a lot of requirements correlated to where, how, when and what to have in their meals. They consider that is a, a, a right to choose what it should be or not should be the ingredient to have in their specific meals which is fine if you do not have to deal with the create something artistic but if you think about hospitality especially food making it's sometimes artistic people that have been dedicating their life to this kind of business they generally want to create art using food so uh, interfere with this process of art creation makes much more difficult for professionals to be interested to the market because the market is not able to recognize them and also the market is not um, keen to allow the professionals to be professional and be able to say what they are passionate about. Then 
Now that I've been doing this quick recap of what are the problems, I would like to speak more about what, in my opinion, they could be the solution. To do so, I will apply the problem with the possible solution. To start with, we will start probably with the market. A market that is a small market, well, you can't do much. I mean, we cannot add people. We can be more interesting in terms of businesses, but we won't be able to reach the 4 million people living in Melbourne or Sydney in a short period of time. Therefore, the size of the market can't change much. The family, that is the same problem. You cannot change this, the, the kind of market in a quick period of time. You can be more focused, you can try to educate more, but it's really more difficult to fix this problem in a quick period of time. Lack of professional workers on the market. Well, in this case, something it could be possible to do. What I mean that businesses, they should probably start to provide a bit more reliability to their workers. What I mean is that as a professional, me too, I had many times the experience to receive a call maybe a couple hours before they was having to start work and the call was saying, I'm sorry Simone, but we are now busy enough and you can stay home. That obviously it's understandable when you are in a position that you're not interested to work over there. But doing this step, you mil you might be making the, the business more unstable. And if you're a professional like me, after a few times that you're doing this trick, and then I'm going to simply close the opportunities for you to be to work together anymore. And uh, so businesses, they should start to create a platform of development instead of a platform of use. And uh, it will be, obviously, it should be a um, reward with a work provided from the workers, so from the labor force. To do so, you need to have a contract, a contract that bind, bind, bind together these two sides. So a contract that allows workers to rely more on the work, so on their job, but also work uh, businesses that can rely more to their workers. In Italy, even though there is a lot of uh, black market, if you want to say, uh, generally, when you work in the environment or industry, you end to have a contract with no term that provides you holidays, provides you few uh, opportunities of develop your own skill. But it's required to be more professional than what is required over here. Then, um, marketing strategies, it's, um, it's kind of tricky uh, because obviously, uh, changing the strategy and on moving from select your own market instead and say yes is really dangerous. You could lose your market if you start to say no. That is depending in which direction you want to move. This probably also will be part of a new video that I'm going to do in the future, which is the big split I see in the future of hospitality in terms of automation. For businesses, they won't decide, they won't choose to go in the high hand direction. There is no much option that go in a high automation level. So let's do not speak about this topic for the moment, but keep in mind that one of the solution of this problem is to introduce a higher level of optimization. If we have a look around in the environment, it's already happening, included uh, known uh, brands that they are starting to have more automatic cashiers than not normal human cashier working at the till. So uh, distribution, again, it's a problem, especially in the market, because distribution, you cannot receive the goods that they are um, they are required for you. So the best option for a business, it should be to be able to create an inland network. So uh, find resources locally, 
because South Australia has a big production of food and wine, it should not be so difficult for you, unless your customer requires something that it comes from another country. And that it comes your braveness as a business to create something that is unique, that is really special from your country and not copying somebody else's styles from coming from other states or countries. Okay, let's speak about the problems correlated with the workers. So, work instability. As I said before, if the business is going to provide you a, a contract, it probably is going to require you to have much more specialization. At that point, you might choose to work in hospitality because you can base your life on the industry. No professional recognition that is correlated with that because starting to re require much more professionality behind the profession of working in hospitality, you also start to create more knowledge and vibe all over the environment, not just in the, spe in the specialized people. To do so, there should be probably a need of introduce few new pathway of um, study and communication. For instance, something that will be, in my opinion, important to create a study pathway here in Australia, it's the pathway of the food communicator. Someone that is capable of communicating food in a way that is going to be more intriguing and also is going to justify a high, have, a high level of expenditure for the experience. About the lower wage, that is not possible to do much. I mean, yes, cent centralized, uh, no, maybe not centralized, but um, having many businesses moving out to the uh, workforce and having more automated uh, services obviously will create a niche of professionals which are highly recognized and businesses that they have a high standard and people is keen of paying more when they have to deal with human beings than not with robots. But um, it won't change at the moment the wage, the level of wage. Uh, what it could be probably useful in my opinion to fix again the work instability, it would be the idea to create a um, um, a limitation into the uh, legislation. So create a legislation where um, workers, they have to be employed or uh, the, uh, a percentage, a high percentage of worker for a business, they need to be employed. So you cannot have more than top percentage of uh, uh, casual workers as a business. That's obviously is a restriction for many businesses, but also it's going to force the end and a lot of businesses will move in automation and the other one left, they will move on a high hand. Then uh, as a solution, in this case, we're going to move on the final customer. This is the, fast, the, the last category. Final customer, how to create, um, how to change customer habits. Well, can change customer habits is quite um, risky and dangerous. Uh, however, we spend the majority of the time, especially in marketing, to try to change customer habits. Therefore, it should not be impossible, uh, but it need to be, it should be uh, driven from um, a common vision. So the government should start to change with the way, with the a series of uh, marketing uh, champagne or promotion champagne, they should start to be focused more on the specific, the quality behind food, the local behind food and the seasonal, because those are connected directly with the local producers. So bringing the attention from the final customer to the local producers. Also, local producers they, they have the opportunity to create um, a pathway and that's why I'm working at the moment which is the Agri Adventures project. They are 
um, they will have the opportunity to create a network of local producers that they can, with the use of uh, experiences, educational experiences, they are able to attract the final customer in their establishment and show them what it means create food, what it means make food, how difficult it is, what are the effort behind. And at that point, the customer will start to have more knowledge than what is available now. Therefore, the customer will be able to choose wisely where to go to get their products and understanding what's the difference between a fast food chain and a restaurant. These are probably the possible solution to, um, to apply, in my opinion, to the problems that I've seen so far in South Australia. Um, I hope that the video uh, was interesting and uh, I'm really interested to know what you think if you want to give me your advice so if you want to send me a message and tell to me uh, what you think it's right what is not I'm really happy and really really open and uh, if you're interested to other um, subjects you can post them below and you can ask me what I think about or what I could speak about and uh, there are there will be more videos uh, coming also if you are um, in Adelaide and you want to list uh, my radio programs I am uh, on uh, Radio Italia 1 Adelaide every um, every Sunday from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Uh, you may have to check out the Facebook page my Facebook page which is Berliat Trading and Services or you can check out the uh, Radio Italia 1 um, Facebook page for the topic of the week. Sometimes it will be in Italian and other times will be in English. Thank you very much for watching me. Please leave your comments below. If you're really really interested you can subscribe and I will see you the next time. Have a good day. Ciao.